for a second, what were you just thinking? Between the time I said stop, what were you thinking? And when the kirtan ended. Raise it. No, no. <laughs> no. We won't ask you what it was. But how many of you were able just to naturally keep the mantra going? You don't have to raise your hand. And how many of you mind wandered? You don't have to raise your hand. But that is the tendency I've noticed, is that as soon as the mind isn't directly engaged in Krishna consciousness, it goes far, far away from Krishna. And then there are stages, like in Ruchi, or Asati actually, where when the mind wanders, it wanders to Krishna, not away from Krishna. So that stage is very wonderful. And then when the mind wanders to Krishna, not away from Krishna, and that <coughs> means one is very attached to Krishna. What I'd like you to do now is find two or three people to talk to and discuss a little what you remember from what we spoke about this morning. We'll do that for a few minutes. Go ahead. Just turn around and find someone to talk to. Try to make it Krishna conscious. what you remember. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Krishna Pustaya Vitale, Srimati Bhakti Vidanti Swami Vitale. All those who keep talking have to go outside or stand in the corner. <laughs> and there's only four corners, so it's a problem. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Padaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityanamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharane Nivasei Sasunya Vadi Prasthati Devi Vitaane Om Ganeshavinandasya Dhuna Dhuna Salakaya Chakshishimaritam Dhena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama Sri Chaitanya Manavistam Stapitam Dhena Bhutale Sayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Sapalanti Kam Vansakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripasindu Vayavacha Patitanam Bhavanedo Vaishnavedo Namo Nama Krishna had and Balaram with the tusks of Kuvalaya Pita had walked in front of the crowd surrounding them and Kamsa was sitting on the dais in the the seats of the seat of honor and on his one side was Vasudeva, on the other side was Akura. And when Kamsa saw them, he was overwhelmed with anxiety. And remember, we didn't speak about it in detail, but Krishna was dressed in a remarkable way, colorful clothes, um, newly made by the tailor after he after Krishna had killed the washerman. And he was so effulgent and he looked so beautiful and powerful with the tusk of the elephant upon his shoulder, decorated with the blood of the elephant. And it looked like his whole body was painted with, with um, beautiful red colors. And Kamsa was in complete anxiety and everyone in the whole arena, their minds were completely absorbed in Krishna. And Krishna's ornaments, despite having just have fought with the elephant, his garland, his bracelets, his necklaces, his earrings, nothing was disturbed. So when the people in the wrestling arena looked at Krishna, their eyes just naturally opened wide, blossoming like a lotus flower. And their eyes were like cups also. Their eyes became like mouths. And they were drinking the beauty of Krishna. And as much as they looked at that beauty, they didn't become um, satiated or they didn't become used to it and think, oh, I've seen this already, let me see something else. <clears throat> so, while everyone was looking at Krishna, they began to remember Krishna because they knew that he was the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. And this will come out right now. They knew that he had been invited to the wrestling arena. They knew that Kamsa had invited him. They knew that, um, that the demons that Kamsa had sent to kill Krishna, they had all been killed. 
They understood just by looking at Krishna, they understood something about his bravery. Previously, they had heard about this boy in nearby Vrindavan, who was very, very beautiful, who had killed this demon, who had even done what? <laughs> Lifted Govanan Hill, and he had danced upon the heads of Kaliya. They had heard about this. They had heard, they had heard that he was so charming. They had heard that he was so strong. They had heard that he was so attractive. But none of them had ever seen him before. And they were all basically afraid of Kamsa. But when confronted with the beauty of Krishna, some of them began to speak right in front of Kamsa so that Kamsa could hear. They began to speak about what they, about what they had heard about Krishna. And by seeing Krishna's power, just by seeing him standing there with the tusk on his shoulder, so effulgent and so strong, their doubts were removed that could this boy really be so beautiful? And the answer was, when they looked at Krishna, yes. Could this boy actually be so strong that even when he was just a few months old, actually, um, one year old, I think, killed Trinavarta. How old was Krishna then? Three months or one year? How many months? I think three. And that past, does anyone know that pastime really well? It's such a sweet pastime. Of course, who will say they know it really well? Like when boys play, when there's a group of 20 boys or something like that playing, it's one of the most amazing things when you put different size boys in, and if, you know, they know each other and things, and they're playing, and it, it becomes like an organism. <laughs> and they, sometimes these, the big ones are fighting with the little ones, and sometimes the little ones are crying, and then, and then the, everyone's laughing because the little ones are crying, and then, then the sides change. And then the, that one's crying, and this one's laughing, and it just moves like a creature or something like that. And it's just, it's just simply a, um, a display of fun, basically, boys playing like that. So Krishna, when he was with his friends, it would be something like that. Do you ever play like that? Just play with a bunch of boys, and do you cry sometimes? Does that make you cry? Yeah? And sometimes you make them cry? No, okay. So they had heard so much about Krishna. Could this really be true that someone they had doubts? Could it really be true that someone is so attractive? And then seeing Krishna manifest before them in the wrestling arena, all their doubts were removed. And they began to speak, even in Kamsa's presence. Because again, you know, Kamsa was actually a Rakshasa. You know what a Rakshasa does? He eats little boys, especially those who wear blue shirts who are, who are naughty in class. So they have to be very careful. But he would eat Brahmins. He was, he was terrible. He was terrible. He was actually the son of a Rakshasa. Yeah, did you know that? <clears throat> That's true. So the people began to speak. These boys are certainly expansions of the Supreme Lord Narayan who have come into this world as the, in the home of Vasudev. So there they're directly saying it. Yep, you sit over here. Uh huh? Excuse me? Excuse me? I didn't do anything. I didn't say you did anything. I just wanted you to be close to me. 
I'd be a little afraid to bring Garanga that close. Who knows what would happen? Okay, Garanga, you come over. You sit under here, the desk, under the desk. No, no, no. No, you sit right over here next to Drew. It's divide and conquer. <laughs> At least an attempt. Okay, Gopal, now who are you going to... Okay, you, you can disturb Shandasunda. It's a bit dangerous, yeah? Okay. So in front of Kamsa, they actually began to say that he was, that Vasudeva and Devaki, they sent him away and he, from the house of Vasudeva. <laughs> Um, this one took birth in front of Kamsa, and he was hearing it. Took birth from Devaki, but he remained concealed in Gokul, and he grew up in the house of King Nanda. Of course, Narada Muni had already told this to Kamsa. And they were said, they used the word Kila. Certainly this is what happened. And then they said that Putana, when Krishna was how old? Very young. Maybe one month. One month, I think. One month, he killed Putana because all this news came back, had come back to them. And then they kill, he killed Trinavarta. With Putana, he showed that his lips were all powerful. With Trinavarta, he showed that his arms, because he choked him. Because when you, when you hold up a baby, Karanga, we're going to try this with you right now, OK? No, we won't. <laughs> the baby, hold, when they're a little afraid, they hold on tightly. So that when Krishna was doing that to Trinavarti, choked Trinavarti, and Trinavarti couldn't, couldn't move him. And he killed Shankachuda, and he killed Kesi, and he killed Danuka and similar demons. Now, who actually killed Danukasura? No. But one could also say that Krishna killed him through Balaram. One could also say that. So they were speaking about all these things that they had previously heard about. And then, in the last verse describing the beauty of Krishna, they say that the gopis, they speak about the Braja gopis, who overcame all distress and experienced great happiness just by seeing his face, which is always cheerful and smiling. His glances are always smiling and free of all anxiety, free of all tiredness. They overcame all anxiety and worry just by seeing the face of Krishna. And then they said, openly in front of Kamsa, they hinted at his future pastimes. It is said, this is text 29, that under Krishna's full protection, the Yadu dynasty will become extremely famous because Kamsa had driven the Yadu dynasty out of Mathura. And they were hiding in different kingdoms, even in caves. They had adopted different, different dresses. You know why? Does anyone know why they had to hide? <clears throat> yes. Because Kamsa was persecuting them? Yes. You know why? Just to take over. But he already was over. He had taken over. But why? Does anyone remember? Because yes. Because they were incarnations of various demigods. Yes, and how did he know that? Because Narada Muni told him. Narada Muni told him. And you could ask, why did Narada Muni do this? <laughs> because that's Narada Muni. He really, he likes to stir things up. <laughs> In fact, it, right at this particular time when he told them, um, he said he met Kamsa. Um, when he directly told him that Krishna was the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. I think it's in chapter 36 or so of the 10th canto. He said, when I was coming here, 
I happened to pass by the, um, the Mandara Mountain. And when I was passing by Ma Mandara Mountain, there was a meeting of the demigods. They were sitting and they were talking. And you know the, who they were talking about? Constant. No, who? They were talking about you. And you know what they were planning? No, they were planning on how to kill you. <laughs> Would you like to hear more? <laughs> they were planning on incarnating. The demigods were taking birth as the members of the Yadu dynasty. Anyway, I thought I'd let you know. I have to go now. <laughs> because Narada Muni is always, he's trying to speed up the pastimes make them happen because he wanted to actually he wanted to see Krishna's pastime of Kamsa being killed by Krishna. So he said now the people were saying it is said under your full under Krishna's protection the Yadu dynasty will become extremely famous. They were driven out, they were hiding, they were practically poverty stricken. They'll become famous and attain wealth, glory and power. And Kamsa was saying, this person is such a threat to me. And then there was one verse where the people start speaking about Balaram. The lotus-eyed elder brother of Krishna, of his, Lord Balaram, is the proprietor of all transcendental opulence. He has killed, now there's, he mentions three demons. Now you have to listen to them very carefully. He has killed Vatsasura, he has killed Bakasura, and other demons, and Pralambasura. Now what do you note in that? I hear mummerings in the background, but I hear no one has raised their hand. I don't hear anyone brave enough to clearly say the interesting thing about this. Who is so brave? He, yes. Yes, and Palambasura indeed was killed in a wonderful, wonderful way. He was killed by Balaram. So our acharyas explain that how does anyone know how many kilometers it is from Maya from uh, Mathura to Vrindavan? You know? You know? Is it eight or twelve? Which is it? <coughs> Ten or compromise. Make everyone happy. <laughs> okay. Do you know how much is it? How many? Not very far. No, it's very close. Minutes. Yeah. How long? Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Half an hour. By what? <laughs> by <minutes. laughs> walking. Oh, by bicycle ritual. Okay. So it was very close. <coughs> and even in that Close, and we could actually perform an experiment over here. But as, did you hear that Krishna killed Bakasura? No, really. Let me tell someone. Oh, Krishna killed Bakasura. And then before it's very long, Krishna killed Danukasura. And, and Balaram killed Banak. This is because people, when they pass things along and tell the, the local goings on, it always becomes a little bit changed. Have you noticed that? So, Vatasura, Bakasura, and other demons. And then, the people were glorifying Krishna and Balaram in such a way in front of Kamsa. And the wrestlers could not tolerate this. They were just waiting. They were just waiting. So, and I, um, there were some verses I wanted to... Um, go into more detail on it, but because I got a little bit behind, I have to speed up a little bit. So Tanora immediately told the music because the people were speaking about Krishna and Balaram in such a wonderful way. heavy. 
they, they used to, in the old days, when there would be battles, they would have people actually, the drummers would be playing just to, to keep everyone's spirits up. It's when they would fight, really. So, so immediately, Sonora said, start the music, start the music, like that, because he wanted it to drown out the praise that people were giving to Krishna Balaram. What is that called? What word describes that mood where you cannot tolerate hearing the praise of someone else? Yes. yes. You knew that. You knew that or you heard what the elders were saying? No, I knew it. Yeah. Enviousness. So they were so envious of Krishna and Balaram. So Tanura immediately, now to give you an understanding, where, where is Krishna? You're Krishna, yes? Okay, Krishna, you stand up. How old are you now? Did you get any older? <laughs> okay, how old are you? Okay. Shum, stand up. <laughs> okay, stand next to each other. Now, if we said right now, now face everyone, turn around and face everyone. Now, if we said we're going to have a wonderful wrestling match <laughs> now <laughs> between Samasunda and we have to change your name for the sake of this, okay? No, we can't. Okay, between Shama Tenora and, <laughs> and Krishna. We're going to a, a, rest, a serious wrestling match. Now, everyone would think this is ridiculous. Okay, now you can sit down. Later on, we'll clear out the center and you can have the wrestling match. But, I mean, that's what it was like. But except that Sonora was even, I wouldn't say stronger, but at least he was even bigger than Shama Sunda. So Sonora then went over to little Krishna. It was so big, so strong. And actually, this, I don't see if you can find this verse. It's 32. He said, Hey, Nanda Suno, O son of Nanda. Hey, Rama. So notice he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't give Krishna any credit by saying, before everyone was saying that he's a Chatriya born of Vasudev and Devaki. But now you're just, now Nanda Suno, you're the son of a cowardsman. And, and Rama, and Balarama, he wouldn't mention his dynasty even to give him the credit of being a Kshatriya. And then he says, Bhavanto Vira Samoto. Just imagine big Chanura. This is the wrong version. Is that yellow or is that my imagination? Huh? It seems to be a little overheated for it to come yellow. You mean it's going to change into white? Wow, this is wonderful. <laughs> a little bit wonderful anyway. <laughs> so you too, he said, the big one is telling the little one, Bhavanto, you too are well-respected heroes. And Niyuda Kusalao Shutva, I have heard or hearing that you are so expert, Kusalam, in wrestling, Nayuda and fighting, wrestling also can mean, Nayuda also can mean arm wrestling too. Then, therefore, the king, Raja Abu Ahuto, the Dikshuna, the king has called you here to see you wrestle, hearing of your great skills in wrestling. And then, Sunora said, those who are subjects of the king, who try to please the king with their thoughts, their acts, and their deeds, they are sure to achieve good fortune. And he wants to see you, because of your wrestling skills, wrestle with me. And those who fail to satisfy the king they suffer the opposite fate. They get misfortune only. And it is well known that you cowherd boys, you are all cowherd boys, 
now, okay? Not, you're already <laughs> coward boys. Gopal, you're a coward boy, yes? Yes. Yes, that we already knew because your name is Gopal. <laughs> See, we know already that you cowherd boys are always joyful as you're basically only doing two things. Actually, there's a third thing too. But they're always joyful, cowherd boys. It's much better than school, by the way, being a cowherd boy. Not that we want to get your parents angry at us. But what the cowherd boys would do every day, or they would go out with the calves, and they'd just play all day long. And sometimes they would go swimming in the Yamuna, sometimes they would wrestle, and they would take care of the cows and the calves. So we know that you boys are very expert in wrestling. So there's the big, big Tsunora teasing them and saying, oh, you are very powerful and expert in wrestling. Therefore, since the king wants to see you display your powers, we should do what the king wants. Everyone will be pleased with us if we wrestle, because the king embodies all living beings. So hearing this, little Krishna, he replied, little beautiful Krishna, with the tusk of the elephant on his shoulder, looking so beautiful and looking so effulgent. He replied, yes. He actually, of course, wanted to wrestle with Tenora because he wanted to fight with the elephant because he likes to play, because Krishna is so playful. But Krishna replied, oh, it is true. But we are, we are forest dwellers. We just live in the van. We live in the Vrindavan forest. And yes, we are subjects of the king. And yes, we must satisfy his desires. Because we know that by satisfying him, and he uses the word parama anugraha, we will get the supreme mercy. Parama anugraha. But actually, um, our acharyas say that um, we will give him the parama anugraha. We will give him the supreme mercy by killing him. <laughs> that will be very merciful to him because he's. And actually, the the devatas had 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 um, had prayed that these demons that because when Vishnu, Lord Vishnu, kills a demon, they don't get liberation. Only when Krishna kills a demon, liberation is granted. So the devatas were praying, even Lord Brahma, I think you should be merciful to these demons and liberate them, they told Krishna, because they keep coming back and giving us so much trouble. <laughs> so Krishna said, yes, we will, get, we will certainly get Parama Anugraha. But, and this is very interesting what they said, we are just young boys. Okay, stand up, Krishna. And we should play with those of equal strength. Hi, Viva, you stand up. We should play and wrestle with those of equal strength. Not with, Samasunda, you have to stand up now. Not with huge mountain like people like you. So, wrestling is good. Do you want to wrestle with them right now? Uh, no, I didn't think so. A gentle person. Well, there's only one other person this size. That's his father. <laughs> Sonora and... <laughs> against Krishna and Balaram. Okay, everyone move out of the center. No, no. But Krishna said... Okay, now you can sit down. <laughs> Krishna said, but wrestling should be among, amongst equals. Otherwise, it will be irreligious. And what Krishna was saying, and this is demonstrated later, that my cowherd boyfriends, they are equal to me in fighting. And to fight you is nothing. 
<laughs> it's not fighting amongst equals. That's irreligious. Better that, better that we just I continue fighting with my coward boyfriends, as you said, because they are so powerful. Not like you. And Tanura then answered, not understanding Krishna's warning that was spoken indirectly. He said, Krishna, you are not a child. You're not even a young man. Neither is Balaram. He's the strongest of the strong. After all, you just easily, playfully almost, killed the elephant, Kuvalaya Pita, who is as strong as a thousand elephants. Therefore, it is important, or essential even, that you fight the powerful wrestlers. And there's nothing unfair about that. All descendants of Vishnu. You are a descendant of Vishnu. You're born in this powerful Chatriya family of Vishnu. Do not be afraid. You're a Chatriya. Now, you can show your prowess, your strength, and your skill against me, Tanura. And Balaram can fight with Mastika. Confirmed. <laughs> so Krishna decided at that point to accept the challenge. And he paired off with Tanura and Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram with Mastika. Now let's, let's see if, the, if we put that same music on, which is so thrilling. But a little softer. You feel like wrestling now? Yeah, I thought you would. Okay. So immediately, maybe you have to make the microphone up a little bit too. Seizing each other's hands. Now wrestling is actually a great art. And Tenora and Mastika were great expert wrestlers. It is said they crossed to the other side of wrestling skills. So they seized each other by their hands, and they locked legs with each other, trying to, does anyone study wrestling here? <laughs> I'm not joking, this is serious business. This Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Yes, you've studied that? No, only jiu. Yes, you did? It's heavy, yes? You? Huh? Okay, who will you wrestle with next? Partial. <laughs> okay, keep it on. I want to hear the music going. So they struck each other, fist against fist, knees against knees. They were pushing head to head and chest against chest. And Krishna, Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur, because Krishna does everything in a special way. So he decided, because as they were pushing their fists like this, Krishna decided to wrestle with one pinky out <laughs> in a very delicate way. And, Chan <laughs> and Chanora looked at him and he thought, well, if he does it, I have to do it also. So he also, even though he didn't know how to do anything like that. So he said, I, if I use this and he's using this, it won't look very good. We need more music. We have to get that mood going. So each fighter, the contending, because Krishna wanted to play wrestling. He contended, raise your hand, any of the boys who don't wrestle with their friends. Who do not wrestle with your friends. You wrestle with your friends, Goranga? Yes. Yeah, OK. You? Yeah. But the girls, raise, girls, do you wrestle with your friends? No. So this is something that is great pleasure. When I was in, I used to wrestle with my friends too. You too? You too? You? 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 Did you used to wrestle with your friends when you were young? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Did you used to win or lose? Yeah, I knew you would say that. <laughs> Was anyone undefeated? 
<laughs> okay. No one's so brave because then they would have to fight Ramasunda. <laughs> so they were picking each other up even and throwing each other down and they pushed each other away and they were holding each other down and the, the, they didn't even care about their own bodies as they were fighting in the excitement of the match. Of course, there's nothing that can hurt Krishna's body, but this is what it looked like to the outsiders. They were all eager for victory. Sometimes they grabbed each other's throats, they lifted them in the air and threw them down. Yes, we need the music. So this is how the spectators, they were watching it. Now, one more time, Krishna, Kamasunda, sorry. Anyway, think of it as exercise, it's good. <laughs> up and down and up and down. Okay, face each other. Now, just for us, just don't hurt him, okay? Put your hands on his shoulders. Now, put your hands on him. <laughs> You get the point. So the audience, okay, the audience, all the people who are watching this. Now, the, these verses are very, very, very interesting. The people are just spontaneously speaking, and they were complaining. They were complaining about this unfair match. And guess who is, com who is doing the complaining? I'll give you a hint. There were men and women in the wrestling arena, I mean, in the audience. And it wasn't the men who were complaining. Who do you think was complaining? The ladies, yes. They're complaining, this is not fair. This is improper. This is irreligious. The members of this royal assembly are committing an irreligious act. And the king is watching this fight, and he's not stopping it. That means he wants to see it. And the ordinary people, following the example of the king, they're also watching it. But it is irreligious. It is unfair. And what comparison? How could you compare these huge mountain-like wrestlers whose limbs are as strong as thunderbolts and their bodies resemble mighty mountains. How you, could you compare it to these two gentle boys? Two gentle boys, stand up. You have to face it. How, how could these big adult fighters fight these two gentle boys? and their limbs are so tender, this is improper. Religious principles are certainly being violated in this assembly. And if somehow or another, and this is an interesting instruction, if somehow or another we have wrongfully entered this assembly to see these things, we should leave or we should speak and express the impropriety, the irreligion that is going on. So a person should not enter an assembly if he knows that the participants are engaging in impropriety. And if after entering the assembly, if that person fails to speak the truth or speaks falsely or said, I didn't know, there is sin incurred, so we should leave. At least we are speaking against this. And this, they were so upset. They were speaking and Kamsa was able to hear everything. So these, in four verses, the people complained, the ladies complained. But then another group of ladies just looked at Krishna. And they could not help but admiring his beauty and his expertise. Just see the lotus face of Krishna as he moves so quickly around his foe. And that face, 
which is decorated, that beautiful face which is decorated with perspiration, which is brought about by this strenuous fight. It resembles a lotus, a soft, beautiful lotus that is covered with dew. And look at the face of Balaram. They become captured by the beauty of Krishna and Balaram. And Balaram, Krishna is just playfully dancing around and fighting. But Balaram's eyes have become copper red with anger. So he's expressing Krishna's anger, our Acharyas say. But he's laughing as he does this. And that laughing makes his beautiful face still seem more beautiful. Look how absorbed Balaram is in the fight. And then 13, 14, 15, and 16. There are four verses um, that express a different mood. mood either similar to the gopis or they glorify the gopis. And there is so much for us to learn in this. So here they say Punya Vata Brajabhuva, the land of Braja is so pious. Why? Because Yad Avam Nri Lingam that Krishna, the Parama Purusa, is walking around this land disguised as a human being, acting as if he's a human being. And what is he doing? Look what the Supreme Parama Purusha is doing. He's wearing garlands of Vanamalya. Just forest flower garlands. And what else is he doing? Sapalayam sahabala konantam venum. He, along with Balaram, is herding the cows and he's playing his flute. And in this way, he, uh, whose feet are worshipped by the goddess of fortune, and Lord Shiva himself, is playing in Vrindavan. Okay, just turn, you can turn that off right now. So on one hand, they're criticizing Mathura. Because they're saying, when Krishna is in Vrindavan, look what he does. He just wanders it around with his friends in such a wonderful way, dressed in the, in the, with, um, dressed with a peacock feather on his head, and he's playing his flute with his friends, just herding the cows. But look what happens when he comes to Mathura. Look at the reception we're giving him. We're having him fight with these wrestlers, these giant mountain-like wrestlers. So we are the most unfortunate, and the residents of Vrindavan are the most fortunate because they get to see this beautiful Krishna all the time. So these um, Vishnu Sula Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says, this is spoken by either the the yogic brahmanas wives, who's been to the city, the place of the yogic brahmanas. Yes, do you remember the name of that town? Does anyone know the name? Mm -hmm. Right? Near Kuragat? It's called Batra. A very special place. Just where the, the wives of the Brahmanas came to see Krishna and Balaram. And the boys, the coward boys. And this is an interesting question that my son asked. When he was, how old was Jagarupad when he asked? He was like eight years old or 10 years old or something. Question. You don't know the question when you hear the question. Ask a lot of questions. Yeah. He said, 
if the cowherd boys are only concerned with Krishna's pleasure, how come they said, oh, we are hungry, Krishna, and please, please get us some food? If they're only concerned with Krishna's pleasure. Do you remember that question? How old was he? Ten. Ten. Okay, all ten-year-olds, stand up. <laughs> okay. So, he, so that question could be asked. They were hungry, and they asked Krishna to supply them food. We thought that they were only concerned with Krishna. And the answer is given that if they would have said, Krishna, you must be hungry, because there was no food for that day. When someone says, you're very hungry, what do you say? Oh, no, 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 no. But when someone says, I'm very hungry, a dear friend, then immediately you'll want to give them food, and you'll take food because you're also hungry. So in, because everything in Braj is a little bit, what's the word? <laughs> Nothing is very straightforward in Braj, but everything, everything in Vrindavan, and this is what Vrindavan means, everything is centered around Krishna's pleasure. So this is described in, in Adi Lila, um, Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 4. It doesn't make a difference. If the, if the gopis are combing their own hair, if they're dressing, it looks like they're trying to make themselves beautiful for their own pleasure, but everything is done for Krishna's pleasure. Just try to understand what love for Krishna actually is. Try to understand how, how unselfish it is. Oh, it's, excuse me. It's time for me to take some medicine. We have a medicine break. Now, after, how many of these? I just take one sip of this, yes? Okay, it's homeopathic medicine. And then how many of these? Don't look. Look at that over there. It's amazing. Did I trick you? Yes? You're easy. <laughs> One, two, three, and one more for good luck. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Ow. <laughs> so we should we should actually try and understand what love actually is. And we understand that the residents of Vrindavan they possess this kind of love. And then when we understand what love actually is, then we will become very humble. And we won't think ourselves, oh yes, I'm a devotee and I'm better than this one and I'm better. No, we will become very humble because we'll say, <laughs> because naturally when we understand what love is, we understand what love isn't. And, we, and when we examine our own hearts, it's easy to see all the selfishness that's in there. And when we're humble, what is the benefit of becoming humble? That then, kirtaniya sadahari. Then we can chant. Then we can chant in relationship with Krishna, calling out to Krishna, if, if we actually have that desire. And if we don't have that desire, and we understand the nature of the material world, and we have desires in the material world. And if we don't have a pure desire to love Krishna, then we can think only if, only if one day, one day. And when we see someone who is more advanced than us, who is more, um, less selfish than us, then we can serve them. And life, <laughs> is more natural when we are humble and it's, it's easier. So by understanding the actual love of the residents of Vrindavan, that must make us more humble. So they continue to speak in these four verses. 
They say it in the next verse after this one. Go ahead. Yes. How is it? What to pasias? What austerities? How is it that the gopis attained this ability to see Krishna? Because Krishna's face is so beautiful. And, and also, when we think of this, we just think of how many people live in Melbourne. How many people do live in Melbourne? Three million? Four. Five million. Okay. And how many people come and see the beautiful face of Radha Balava? Not, not even one million every day. <laughs> so it's very rare souls who get that fortune. Because when you, and it's, it's so easy to experience too. Anyone, everyone who walks in the temple of Radha Balava, immediately you can feel this is not ordinary. This is not of the material world. This is, or of course, they might not think it's not of the material world. You might not think like that. But the atmosphere is something completely different from downtown Melbourne or downtown Chennai or, or some other city or New York, even New York. It's different from. It's just something very, very, it's clean, it's pure. And it affects the consciousness. It affects the mind to be in that atmosphere. And therefore, when the, the devotees, when they were praying to Krishna in the womb, well, he was still in the womb, they said, that the, how can we understand that you're actually the Supreme Lord? You're in the, a womb, you're like a child, like not an unborn child. But by being in your presence, the difference between the, being in the presence of transcendence, of the spiritual, and being in the, present, the presence of, the, of something material is so clear that we can understand that this is transcendental, that you are transcendental, that you are the Supreme Lord. And that, in one sense, is not in one sense, but that is really what we want to do. Keep always in the presence of transcendence. That really is our goal. And we saw this with Prabhupada, and we see this with some of Prabhupada's great followers, that they're always, always thinking about Krishna, talking about Krishna. Mahaprabhu uh, recommended Kirtaniya Sadahari that always tend for this reason. Not only will material contamination never ever touch you, but you'll develop love for Krishna by being in Krishna's association, by being, keeping oneself always in Krishna's association. And Krishna, as Mahaprabhu said in the second verse of Shikshastakam, he's made it very easy. He's put all his potencies into his holy names. And there's no hard and fast rules. The deity doors, the curtains close, but there is no closing of the curtains of the holy name. At any time, at any place, we can chant. But the second that the curtains close, and the second we go outside, and the second we start taking prasadam, and the second the class ends, immediately the mind tries, it immediately holds on to something. At least I can speak for myself, not for all you great souls. But the mind tends to go immediately to the material platform and think about material things on one level or another, centered around me, and I'm going to do this, and I have to do that, and I, I want to get this, and I'm afraid of this, and I want that, and I have to do this. And immediately, anxiety comes. So we should recognize the goal, and it is, and it is possible. And that goal is to keep ourselves always in transcendence, touching 
transcendence by consciousness. It is possible if there is some love for Krishna. And it is impossible by the strength of one's material intelligence, even if you know it's the best thing. If you say, from now on, I'm only going to think about Krishna, it just can't be done. From... But what happens if one wants to be better than one is, but doesn't have the power? That's called humility. And then one can chant in that mood. One can pray in that mood. One can worship the deities in that mood. But unless we hear about what transcendence is, what purity is, then we won't know, we won't have even a glimpse. So these residents of Mathura, look at, listen to how they describe Krishna and why they say that the gopis must have performed austerities. They say that they see the form of Krishna, amus, amus rupam, who is lavanya saram, who is the essence of loveliness. We see lovely things, but Krishna is the loveliness in lovely things. Asama Udvam, no one is equal to him in loveliness and beautifulness and attractiveness, and no one surpasses him. Ananya Siddham, and it's not that his ornaments make him perfect, but he makes the ornaments more beautiful. I once had the fortune many years ago to watch, um, it was many years ago when they allowed these things, to watch Tota Gopinath being bathed early in the morning. Raise your hand if you've seen Tota Gopinath. Oh, he's so nice. He's so nice. Garang, have you seen Tota Gopinath? Why? Who has? Yeah? He's wonderful, yes? And have you seen little girl? What is your name? What is your name? Sriya. 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 Oh, what a nice name. Have you seen Tori Gopina? Would you like to? It's very beautiful. So I saw they, they took off his, his dress and they were bathing him, and he just looked so beautiful. And then they started decorating him, putting the different chandan and ornaments on him. And he was already beautiful, and they just made some lines, and he looked more beautiful, but the beauty wasn't coming from the, the lines or the, or the ornaments or the clothes. He was beautiful. He was so beautiful. And these, he, and he made the ornaments worthwhile, practically speaking. So this is Krishna. And one can see Krishna every day, if one is very fortunate. So this is what they were saying, because we all have definitions in our mind. <clears throat> We'd all would like to be more fortunate. So what would it take for you to feel that you were more fortunate than you are? Or here is what the residents of Mathura think upon seeing, the, seeing Krishna's form, that this is fortune. But again, unless our consciousness is correct, just like the different people saw the wrestlers, I saw, the, saw Krishna when he walked into the arena in a different way, we won't see Krishna with this kind of consciousness or this kind. We won't be able to see his beauty and it won't be able to make that kind of impression in our consciousness, in our hearts, unless our consciousness is correct. So how to have correct consciousness? This is why so that the process of seeing, of chanting, of reading, of hearing, it will be effective. This is why um, we follow the principles that we follow in chanting our rounds, etc., etc., to make our consciousness clean. So that 
When we see Krishna, we'll see Krishna, so that impression will come to our heart. When we chant, we'll be in touch with transcendence, so that impression will come to our heart. So we can see the difference, clearly perceive the difference between being in transcendence and being in mundane consciousness. And then at some point, at some fortunate point, will say that I've had enough of being in mundane consciousness. I've had enough. I don't care. I'm just going to chant and chant and chant and chant. But don't wait till the end of your life. It's very difficult then. So they say these, this, this vision of Krishna that the gopis were seeing every day is so difficult to obtain. It is the abode, the only abode, ekanta dhamma yesasriya aiswara. It is the abode, is where beauty lives, is where all opulence lives. Now there's two more verses. And then we'll stop. Now, many of us think naturally that many of us naturally think that my circumstances disallow me from being fully Krishna conscious, and we tend to want to make an external change. And there is truth in that, because some circumstances are better for us than others. But listen to the consciousness of the gopis, that the, that the ladies in the gallery in front of Kamsa, looking at the form of Krishna, look what they're saying about the gopis after saying how fortunate they are. This is text 15, the next text. Yadohane vahane avahane matana upaleka. So the gopis, dohane means while well, milking. What were they milking? Cows. Avahane means threshing. The different weeds and things like that when they were separating the... Do you know what threshing means? Do you know what it means? When you grow grains, like wheat, and you separate the outside from the actual food that is eaten, it's called, the, the, the separating process is called threshing. You understand? Did you ever see any grains? Yes. Where? In India. In India. How long? Did you just get here? From India? Okay. Someone said, what's your name again? Me. Huh? Me. Leaf, yes. We should show you some grains. Did you ever see grains growing in the growing in the fields? Did you ever see? Oh, I remember when I was when I was moved to Gita Nagari, and I saw they were plowing up the potatoes in the field, and I saw how many potatoes came up from under the earth just by plowing, because I I I never saw I never lived in the farm before. And I was a city boy, I thought potatoes come from the supermarket. <laughs> and I was wondering why they always had some dirt on them. And then I became fully realized upon seeing this. And they were so plentiful, there were so many of them. And it was a shock for me, it was a wonderful shock for me. So they were threshing. So while the gopis were threshing, while they were smearing, upaleka, what were they smearing? Now, this is a really hard question. What were they smearing? Cow dung. Have any of you ever smeared cow dung? Raise your hand if you've ever done that. Oh, let's see what. You've done it, Prana. And you've done it. Yeah? Yeah? It's, it's quite amazing, actually. One time, um, we, we were in Bangladesh at um, Prem Tolly, the place of Narottama Thakur. And and there was, there was, the culture was, even though it's Bangladesh is a Muslim country, there was, there was some 
um, in Prem Tali, there was a, a Vaishnava family taking care of the place of Narottama Thakur. And we, and we didn't speak re any Bengali, and we just got off the bus coming from Dhaka, and Zagatrini Mataji and I, we just went to the, the place and went. And the lady who answered, uh, like a grandmotherly lady, she couldn't speak any English, and they, she invited us in, and we ended up staying there for four days. <laughs> and this is Vaishnava culture. It's so amazing. And this is a cramp in my left leg again. But Vaishnava culture is so amazing. And there was the river where Mahaprabhu had the river Padma had deposited Prem waiting for Narottama Thakur. And then she would come to us and say, Seva, Seva. And usually when, when someone says that to you, and if you're near a temple, they want you to do something. <laughs> <laughs> but she said, now, because it, it, this is prasadam seva. She would say that now it's time for you to take prasadam. She would say, seva, seva. So she would cook for us, and then she sat us down, and then after, when she fed us very, very simple but wonderful prasadam offered to the deities, and then after, she would take some cow dung, and she wouldn't wash the place where she fed us, but she'd just take some cow dung and spread it over, smear it over the place. And the atmosphere was so, so auspicious because of this. So this, this culture, this Vaishnava culture is actually so, so, um, so different. I know in, in, where, in New York, I don't know how it is here, it's the same here. Someone knocks on your door and the first thing is just, the thing moves out of the way, they, you look out to the little hole. Okay, who is it? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you do, Goran? You do that too, it was. Okay. Huh? Okay. So while they, whatever they were doing, where they were swinging, um, taking care of their crying babies, or sprinkling water everywhere on the ground, or cleansing, whatever they would do, Whatever they were doing, Gayanti Chainam Anuraktidio Asru Kantya, they would be singing about Krishna. And not mechanically singing about Krishna. While they were singing, their throats would be choked up with tears. And they would be crying, thinking about Krishna. This is love for Krishna. This is what devotion is. So with that consciousness, these, these um, Braja Striya, these ladies of Braja, with this consciousness, they attained everything worthwhile. We strive very hard to attain worthwhile things. But what do we really, what can we say we actually can hold on to in this world? So whatever our situation is, we have to live in the world. Um, whatever our situation is, don't stop living in the world necessarily, but learn how to chant like this, attracted to the form of Krishna. Whatever you're doing, if you happen to be smearing cow dung as your daily work or, or whatever you do, but learn to develop love for Krishna, and then you will, you will have attained that which is really fortunate. Now, here's a question for you. Do you believe that? I, just, I was listening to a lecture where someone said, it was, he, wasn't a, he wasn't actually a devotee, but he was a very thoughtful person. He said, people ask me if I believe in God. And I hate that question. And I thought, why? He said, because do you know what it means to really believe in God? It means you have to act like there's a God, like you're, you're his servant. You're under his protection, and your business is to only serve him. That's what it means to believe in God. So they ask me, do, do I believe in God? And I think, I'm not quite up on that, to that level yet. But this is what love of God is. This is what being, being a devotee is. 
It's natural. It's complete. And it awards everything. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur comments on this earth. Even while doing their household chores, the gopis were not stopped from drinking the nectar of Krishna's sweetness. When they're milking the cows and doing other chores, such as swinging or sprinkling water on the ground, they would sing about his name, qualities, and form. They were, and, and this is the interesting part of this in one sense. They were completely attached to Krishna. But Krishna, because of their love for him, he was completely attracted to them. And he carried them in his heart. Because usually we think it of the other way around, that the great devotees carry Krishna in their heart. But Krishna also carries the great devotees in their hearts. Because they're always thinking about him. And he's always thinking about them. So this is wonderful. This is Krishna. This is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is Krishna, the person. Because we mostly keep our mind on what our responsibility in the relationship with Krishna is. And that's proper. We should think that our duty is to serve Krishna. And we're not supposed to think of what Krishna's duty is in relation to us. But here it describes how dear the devotees are to Krishna. And his transcendental unlimited heart is so big, he has room for even more devotees than fit in this room right are in this room right now. That's why he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So when a devotee actually understands that Krishna is protecting him, he's trying his best to serve Krishna. And Krishna is not just saying, more, give me more, I want more, I want more. Do this, now do this, now do this, now do that. But he's a person. And when something's offered to this person with devotion, he accepts it. And he remembers it. Remember how he treated Ajamil, who was calling the name of his son. And for that reason, he wasn't, didn't even mean Krishna. He was calling his son. And for that reason, how many children are named Krishna in this community? <laughs> how many? Eight. Eight Krishnas. We want unlimited Krishnas. And how many higher grievers are there? Okay. So because Krishna was completely attracted to them, they are considered so fortunate. Now, this is a meditation for devotees. How to act in such a way that Krishna becomes attracted to us. So just the last two verses. So in early morning, This is just the um, 16th verse. Just, just read the English. Dhruv, could you read the English, please, to the 16th verse? When the gopis hear Krishna playing his flute as he leaves Raja in the morning with his cows or returns with them at sunset, the young girls quickly come out of their houses to see him. The flute, as soon as they hear the flute, they know, oh, Krishna's come. Oh, he's going. And they immediately run out of the house to see him. They must have performed many pious activities to be, to be able to see him as he walks on the road. His smiling face mercifully glancing at them. So this is how Krishna reciprocates with them. He lets them know that he knows of their devotion by just glancing at them in a very wonderful way, just glancing at them. He, he touches their hearts. And then... So, so the gopis are all 
or the, 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 the ladies, remember this is in the middle of a wrestling match when very heavy wrestling is going on and Krishna hears the anxiety of, of, the, of the people of Mathura and he decides to end the wrestling match and immediately kill Chanora and Mastika. And that's what we will discuss tomorrow morning, Krishna winning. In the Krishna book, Prabhupada writes, the gopis give a perfect example. Now listen, I want everyone to listen. The big ones, excuse me, the big ones and the little ones, because I'm going to ask you what you remember from this. The gopi, this is from Prabhupada's Krishna book. You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Listen, please. The gopis give a perfect example of how one can execute Krishna consciousness even while performing various types of material engagements. By constantly being absorbed in the thought of Krishna, one cannot be affected by the contamination of material activities. <coughs> The gopis, therefore, are perfectly in trance, samadhi, the highest perfectional stage of mystic power. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is confirmed that one who is constantly thinking of Krishna is a first-class yogi among all kinds of yogis. And then one lady says to another in the, in the audience of the wrestling, my dear friends, one lady told another, we must accept the activities of the gopis to be the highest form of piety. Otherwise, how could they have achieved the opportunity of seeing Krishna both in the morning and the evening? In the morning when he goes to the pasturing ground with his cows and coward boyfriends, and in the evening when he returns with them, playing on his flute and smiling very brilliantly. And then Prabhupada ends this by saying, when Lord Krishna who is the super soul of every living being. He understands what everyone is thinking and praying for and desiring. When Krishna, the super soul of every being, understood that the ladies in the assembly were anxious for him, he immediately responded. He decided not to continue wrestling, but to kill the wrestlers immediately. So I've noted this too. Um, that I pray and pray and pray and pray sometimes, and then it's like no one is listening. It feels like that. But as soon as there is actual sincerity, some depth of sincerity in my calling out or chanting or praying, then what I've noticed is that there's immediate reciprocation from Krishna. So, we tend to, again, we tend to want to change everything external, and sometimes that's helpful, but the real thing that has to be changed is internal. Internal Krishna consciousness. Okay. Now, thank you very much. So much listening for one day, and, and a lot of philosophy, and, and the boys and the young ladies and the older ladies and the older men. You have been so kind and patient, and uh, thank you so much. And, um, and now it's time to go out and take the sarum. And then at exactly 6.30, we will hear something so amazing. So come with fresh minds and happy hearts ready to hear something amazing. And Jantini, Mataji, will we start on time? No. <laughs> okay. We're not going to start on time. When should we start? You, aren't you going to start at 6.30? What time do you finish? We'll finish now. Yeah. Well, if they start at 6.30, since it's a quarter to six right now. Okay, then yes, we'll start on time. You hear that? And what will happen? Anyway, everyone will certainly be on time to hear. 45 minutes. Okay, hello. Stop. <laughs> <laughs>
come. You are so good. Was it difficult? 